Hey you guys, it's Kimmy with Coast DIY and it looks like you got a pumpkin kit. And one of the techniques that I've done on some of the sample pumpkins is a stained kind of realism look using stain. And so this is your tutorial video. And if you bought the stain kit, you're gonna have the colors that I've got in your stain kit. So let's talk, mine are in big bottles, but you've got yours. We've got vintage orange, we've got mustard, Tin Smith looks kind of whitey gray, cream, but it's Tin Smith. Weathered Fence is your gray. Uh, we've got a vintage blue, a row house, which is kind of like a dirty brown. And then we've got early American, which is a more like typical brown that I use. And then olive green for the leaves. So there's your colors. You're gonna have them in 10 milliliter bottles, which will be plenty. Um, I do recommend putting down tape for your pumpkins because I think it's going to be easier to get the process started than as we get to doing some of the technique you'll be pulling up different pieces doing some edges that sort of thing but I think it'll be nice to start and having the pumpkin together now I'm going to take out the stem and the leaves I'm not going to include those and I'm not going to worry that they're perfectly together Uh, for the top and the bottom. I just want each individual pumpkin to be together because I'm going to do different colors. All right, I'm going to set the middle one aside because I think I'll start teaching the technique on the bottom pumpkin because it's bigger. All right, if you've got tape at home, any tape will work. This is just paint tape. Masking tape, I think, is fine as long as you're putting it on the back. back. Ah, I'm all stuck together. All right. Now, obviously, you're going to have your kit and the pumpkins are going to be in pieces. Uh, so the first part is to figure out what order they go in. You'll have a picture for reference. Okay, all right, I'm gonna be right back and walk you through the technique. Okay, so before I teach you the technique, what I've done is I'm gonna do the pumpkins individually, uh, but originally I'm taping them close together. Just think it's easier, it's not what I did when I first did them, but I ended up having to hold them together. So I do think this will help, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of stick them together. Notice it's not perfectly lined up, it's okay. Uh, and I'll do the two and then I'll, I'll do the one. I think it'll be easier, but I'm gonna teach on the big pumpkin because it's easier to see. Okay, let's get to staining. Uh, I've got these labels uh, from shipping. I'm just gonna use that as my palette, use a paper plate. Do anything that you want, but you're gonna find having a little bit of the stain out will help. Uh, so vintage orange is, I'm gonna do, this one is an orange pumpkin, the, like the main color. So let me kind of show you, that's the sample. So this is the orange sample. This is the Hello Pumpkin design. This is black matte, just black matte paint. So here's another orange, and then this is like a gray white. And we're gonna do a blue, because pumpkins come in all colors. All right, but I'm gonna have the most of the orange, and then I'm gonna start with a little bit of the gray out, a tad bit of mustard, uh, and a little bit of early American, which is the lighter brown. And I think I'll add a little bit of row house on this one, see how it looks. That's the darker brown. Okay, and you're just gonna take one of your brushes, any brush, to lay on the paint just to speed up. I'm gonna use one of these big brushes for stain. Okay, so here's your first thing. And I'm gonna talk while I'm doing this about the weirdness of painting with stain. 
Uh, when you start to touch the wood with the stain, it does its process, it starts immediately, right? Like if I wiped this off, there'd be color. And it's gonna start soaking into the wood. So you, on the pumpkin, I want you to brush in the direction of the rib, like I'm doing kind of curvy. Doesn't have to be perfect, but this way, if you get any streaks, they'll make sense on your pumpkin, okay? So then I've done a pretty heavy coat of the vintage orange. Uh, and I've got bristles that are definitely coming out of the brush. That's all right. If you use a chip brush, if you've got a fresh chip brush, you might um, wet it and just try to work the bristles out a little bit. Okay. So first coat is down, nothing fancy, right? I'm gonna keep this brush out because I may come back with it. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and start to accent where the cuts are. And I'm gonna start with the Early American and I am just shoving it into my brush. The brush brushes get beat up in this technique. And this is about, this is the biggest pumpkin on this design, uh, but you use a width of brush that works or then just make two swipes. Uh, but I'm just gonna do a quick rub right on the ribs. I'm not being perfect. Not even worried if it's leaving a lot of color yet. Just kind of getting started. There's a lot of layers to this. Now, here's the thing. Just keep adding a little bit of stain. Um, your stain will begin to get sticky. And that's part of the technique. It's gonna feel strange to you, but it's you want it to be a little bit sticky because it's gonna create the look. Now I'm gonna go in, I'm not even gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna try to grab a little of this row house. I haven't done this color yet, but right along that line, I think it's gonna add a little bit more dimension. Everything's still a little bit wet, sticky, kind of getting a little bit gross. And I'm actually gonna uh, well, I won't stop the video this time. On the next two pumpkins, I'll do close-ups, okay? So grab a glass of wine, coffee, whatever, and just kind of watch me. I think that's going to be easiest. Okay. And I'm just adding some heavy color. Okay. Now, before that gets too wet, I'm going to come back and do a soft pull with my wet orange big brush. Might even grab a little bit more orange. See how it softens everything? Which is all about the look that you want. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean my brush out. You could use a different brush, that's fine. I'm gonna use just a little bit of the mustard. Now, if you're looking really close, you're thinking, Kimmy, that doesn't look very good. It will, it'll come together. It really comes together at the end. So just a little bit of yellow mustard, and I am very lightly pulling down in the direction of the ribs. So the center one, you gotta go kind of both ways. And this is gonna be something that you barely see. I mean, it's gonna be just barely. And when I do the close up, I want you to look at that. As we start to get these colors on after that base layer, it's very subtle. You don't need the color to be strong because it's stain and they'll all have some beautiful dimension. Just super light. And if you see the brush strokes, I think that's okay too. I mean, look, we know it's wood. We know we painted it. I think that's fine. So you're just gonna keep layering on. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in now, I'm gonna leave this brush this way. I'm gonna grab a little bit of vintage orange so that I'm getting kind of a, a mixed color. I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna soften that yellow a little bit. And if you start to notice your stro your strokes are not going with the ribs, just brush it again, okay? I think that's really part of the key is that it has this motion with the brush strokes because you are gonna see them. Okay, I'm starting to like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in some gray, some weathered fence, and I'm gonna actually start this at the bottom as like an undercoat to the dirty pumpkin bottom and I'm gonna pull up again in the direction of the ribs I'm not going crazy if it gets a little heavy don't stress you can go back over with a different color and then I'm gonna kind of once my brush is really dried out, I'm gonna pull up a little harder right at the cuts with this gray. Okay, it's starting to come together. Now, while this is on here, I'm actually gonna go in with a little bit of the row house and mix them together. So the darkest gray-brown gray and then the light gray. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not trying to cover that other color though, so try to pick some different spots to pull. And then give it a good quick. I'm barely putting down any color when I'm doing that. Barely any color at all. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back in and I actually want a little bit more of the yellow and this is all personal preference. You choose the color tones you like, but I'm gonna pull a little bit more yellow like through where the sun might hit. So I'm just gonna do it on this side, this side. And then I think I'll Brush really light when you first hit on the pumpkin. It's not about, when, after you get your first layer down, it's really not about covering, it's about building up that stain, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of Tinsmith. I'm gonna grab a little Tinsmith. Tinsmith will function a little bit, my things are clogged, um, a little bit like white. It is not white. I think if you did a white, you could, but I feel like it'd be really bright against these colors. So that's why I like the Tinsmith. So just a little bit. And because this is so much brighter than the other colors, I'm actually gonna dab off quite a bit before I can see what's gonna happen. And so I'm just gonna pull down just like I did And because it's wet, it's stained, and you have very little on, it's gonna give you a very soft, dry brush look right on top of that yellow. Like the sun's hitting the top of that pumpkin. If you're not comfortable with light brush strokes, just grab a scrap of anything and practice. Okay, I don't hate that, I actually like that a lot. Uh, I'm going to do one thing. One thing I like to do is grab a little bit of vintage orange on a drier brush and just soften some of the strokes a little bit, right? Because it's the color that's on the bottom. And now I'm bringing it up to the top layer. Very light. I'm not covering because it's, again, it's stain but that's gonna give me the layer that look that I want. Now, one last thing. I'm gonna 
add a little bit of olive. I think, I mean, just a bare little bit. And I'm not trying to mimic grass or anything, but I am trying to, if you see those watercolor paintings, they always have like odd colors that pop in there that somehow give it, I don't know, that extra special. So I'll wipe off most of it. And I'm just gonna pull a little bit. I got a little heavy right on that bottom, but that's okay. Again, barely, you know, green and orange are gonna make brown if you get too crazy. So just ever so slight. And then I'm gonna come back. I got really heavy right there. Let me pull some of that off. And then I'm gonna fix my heavy with a little bit of orange right on top. And when you drag from the bottom edge, you're going you could get like an extra thickness of the stain. Just go ahead and go back and clean that up. I even have some runoff up at the top. Okay, Let's see if I can lift this. And... I love it. Now, leaves really quick. I'll do a leaf in this front facing direction. And then what I'm going to do is stop the camera and then I'll do focused and I'll do the white and the blue and you can watch really close to the strokes. Okay. Okay. Um, trying to see which leaf goes where. Oh, I know they fit because I have them together, but oh, that's it. This is this is it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with this little bit of olive that's left over. Put down a base of olive. Okay, need a little bit more. I want it to be green. I want it to look green. Okay. dryer brush had a lot of stain on there and then I'm gonna take a little bit of the early American brown and just kind of I'm not really making it like a perfect line I'm just kind of sponging smooshing around the edges and then just keep cleaning the brush just a little bit and getting it as dry as I can. I'm going to get a little bit of mustard, very little bit, and I'm going to do that same light brush technique. I mean, barely. Okay, maybe a little bit more, uh, a little more than that. There we go. You can I know you can barely see it, but that's that's part of the that's part of the thing. And then now just a little bit of dry brush olive right on top to bring it all together. And that's it. That's all you need to do for the leaves. If you um, are doing one of the kits that is like the stackable that has the base on it do the same thing on the base right same green I'm gonna go ahead and just put the olive down there again with stain you kind of have to move it around a little quick because stain starts to soak into your wood and we'll leave lines like if you put a dot of stain and walk away, you're gonna see that dot forever. You're gonna have to cover it with paint. I used way too much olive. Okay. Yeah, way too much. So this stand is supposed to mimic, you know, when you put wreaths on the table with pumpkins in the center? That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, I'm gonna dirty up the edges. Just 
a little bit of early American. I have no plan for where I'm hitting, just trying to get the edges. That's my dogs. I'm going to turn this off. I'll be right back. Okay, now we got a really close up view. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna do this pumpkin here in a white base. So the majority is gonna be white. So when I say white, I actually mean tin smith. So let me get some of that. And I'm gonna be doing tones of whites and grays. I'll probably put a little bit of vintage blue, some yellow and maybe a little bit of the olive. So I'm gonna start with the base of the Tinsmith. And when it's not on another color, you can see that it's kind of gray in tone, which is good. Got some fuzzies in there. I'm not gonna stress about that. Well, maybe I am. Now's the time to get them. Uh, they will come off, so if you get in there and you don't see them, don't worry about it. They'll come off. All right. Okay, so good base coat. It's still wet, right? You can see how wet it is. That helps to get the soft, blendy look. Okay, so now let me get replenish some of my row house because that I want to go a little darker right this first pass, which means I need to get the tin smith off my brush so I don't mix the stains too much. They'll mix on the pumpkin, but I don't want them to mix in my brush too bad. Okay. Notice that it's not perfect, but it is starting to get sticky. See how that looks right there? That's because it's sticky, but that's, I think it gives it a really cool look. Okay. Rinse that out and then I'm going in, I'm going to do a little bit of early American right on top of that. The beauty of the stains is you can get very cool layered look. Okay. She's looking rough, but that's okay. We're gonna get that look that we want. We're just gonna build it up. Okay, I'm gonna get a really dry brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow. And remember, your stains are still drying, so they will mix a little bit. That's okay. Just keep loading a little bit on. Dabbing off. I'm gonna go back before the tinsmith gets too dry and I'm gonna do a little light wash or brush of some of the tinsmith because I don't want it to be so stark I want it to look like subtle shadows and see that's looking better. 
And as you get used to the technique, just practice. Just keep layering it up. Ooh, that was a little heavy, but we can go back. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna keep going. And then I think what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of olive, just a little bit. Maybe a very little bit. <laughs> Let me get more on my brush. There we go. So just a just a little bit. I mostly like to pull from the outside in when I'm doing this technique because you don't want to end up with like a hard brush start right in the middle of your pumpkin. All right, I like that green. That's just a touch of green. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the vintage blue. Put it on my palette over here. And vintage blue is gonna be the main color of the top pumpkin, but I want to add a little bit in here, see how it looks. I'm going to go kind of just a little bit right in the middle. There's no wrong spot. I wasn't really aiming for that, but I like it. Sometimes things happen. I'm loving that. I'm liking how it's starting to look. Hope the light's okay. Sometimes when you put the camera right on top, it kind of messes that up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab a, just a smidge of vintage orange. I really don't want it to look orange, but I like the idea of having the colors bring the stack together. I'm gonna start with like very, very dry, very dry. See how, see how light that is? That's what I want. So little. Yep. Sorry, I'm focused. <laughs> so just, just a touch. Feel like Bob Ross. Just a touch. Okay, I'm liking that. I'm gonna do one more, get a really dry brush, and I wanna do, hmm, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of Tin Smith, right? Right on the top. looking a little bright, but I think it's going to soften down from that. It won't quite. And I do want this to look like a, one of the white pumpkins, not blue or anything. Okay. I love that. I like this little bit of vintage orange that's popping out right here. And I feel like when you look at it, you see the roundness of the pumpkin. All right. So I'm gonna move this. And then I'm gonna pull down the small pumpkin. And we're gonna do the vintage blue. Get these all put together. All right. Yeah. 
clean brush here and I'm just gonna grab do the base coat like we've been doing now the vintage blue is not quite as green I think as you see on the pumpkins um, there's a Benjamin Moore color called white white blue w-y-t-h-e I think that's definitely more pumpkin color but it's not stain but I think we can get away with this vintage blue. If we add a little bit of the olive kind of in spots, it'll make the eye, I hope, think that it's green. A little more green. Okay, so there's your vintage blue. And I'm gonna go right in with mustard. No, I'm not, no, I'm not. We gotta create the ribs. Let me create the ribs. I'm gonna go early American on this one. Right down the ribs, right down where it's cut. Gonna bring up a little bit from the bottom. While my brush has still got the early American on it, I'm gonna, this is the row house, just a little, not a lot. I'll let that sit for a second while I put on a little bit of mustard. a little heavy. I can cover that. I'm going to do a little bit of a vintage blue wash real quick. Kind of brings your colors together a little bit. And I'm gonna get a little bit of fresh and right here where I thought that it got a little heavy on the yellow, I'm gonna go a little heavy with my vintage blue. See how it just kind of brings it together? another paper towel. If you look right here, you're going to notice you start to see the wood color. It's because my brush is too wet. And because my brush is too wet, it's actually bringing up the stain a little bit. So I just needed to get a fresh paper towel, get it super dry, and then I'm going back in with the vintage blue. Might even have to let that section dry just a little bit because you want it to be kind of sticky. Now, while I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna get a little bit of the olive green. And I'm gonna pull some up from the bottom, just a little bit. Yeah, I like that tone on the side there.
this section right here where I got it a little extra wet, I'm taking a pretty dry brush and just trying to pull off the excess so that it's any uh, absence of stain looks like it was purposeful. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna do a little weathered fence right here. There we go. All right, start to stick back down again. A little bit of vintage blue. And then let's toss a little bit of Tinsmith. There we go. See how the Tinsmith looks white? I'm gonna get a good brush of vintage blue. I'm gonna do a wash like we did on the other ones. Bring a little bit of blue back up in here. maybe we want to do a couple of little orange streaks like we did I just want a little bit I don't want it to go crazy sometimes you can take too much off your brush there we go make sure your curve is right when you're brushing Okay, the only thing that I think I can see that I want is a little bit more Tinsmith at the top. Right through here. A little light. And I'm adding just a little bit of early American to that tinsmith. Dirty up the bottom just a little bit. I love it. All right, let me get these other leaves real quick. And then we will stack them there. Oh, while I have early American on my brush, I can do the stem that's at the top of this stack. I like to do a couple of coats. Early American's not a dark stain. I'm even gonna pre-dirty these around the edge. The beauty of stain is you can layer any way you want. And I'm gonna go in and get the olive. Let it sit on there a second. All right, I think this one's this one. 
it's not quite lined up, but you can see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna stop this and then I'm gonna pull it all together and show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm back and I'm gonna be putting together the pumpkin stack. Um, they're not totally dry, but that's all right. Just using, um, I prefer Tight Bond Quick and Thick and my bottle happens to be at the bottom. So I just poured a bunch out. I don't want it to be too thin because I need to fit all three together and I need it to not like dry so fast that I can't do that, which it wants to do. Let's see. Is that the, that, oh, there we go. You definitely want to fit the leaf in because the leaf hits several of the ribs and that's Part of how you know you got it in the right spot. Yeah, I didn't put enough glue. It wants to dry, so there we go. Hello. All right, and then I can use my hands to put it against the sides. Put the stem on. All right, and that goes up. I can see how they fit. Okay, there's the one. Let's get the, I think the white one is next. I set those all behind the thing. Okay, let's make sure I got this. Um, am I missing a piece? You don't belong there. Ah. Okay. Make sure that's the right one. Okay, this is the right one. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of glue. Oh, that's a bit much. This is the end of my bottle and it's got like a little bit of thick stuff. And we use it all. All right, slide that up in there. There we go. Nice little fit. Get our leaf in before things. Oh wait, did it again? Wrong way. Before everything dries. There we go. And then smoosh it where it belongs. Oops, I just pulled that up. I didn't have any, enough glue on it. There we go. Now, there is supposed to be a smidge of space between each cut where the laser cut it. So just kind of even that space out. All right, let's go for the last one. Had a little bit of orange that squeezed, I should have wiped off, but that's okay. I think they're so cute. All right, then I'm gonna reach for my stand. Oh my gosh. 
I love it. And I can't leave it up that long, obviously, but it is type on quick and thick that I used. And it does tend to dry quick and thick. All right, that's your tutorial. So here's my advice. I would say practice the stroke marks on a sample piece of something. Um, you can do them on any shape that's got like a circle. So you could do like ornaments, that sort of thing to get a round shape to it. And think about where the sun hits it, right? So do some highlights across the top, low lights across the bottom, and then detail out your ribs. And then do a wash of that underneath color over top just to soften everything up. And I'm gonna show you. Remember I said I had a drop of water? See that right there? Don't drop water. Make sure your brush is dry. All right, hope you love it. Uh, I will post the video and in the, I will do a post of this uh, with all of the colors that I use. That way if you wanna go get them, you can go get them. All right, and if you are buying a kit for me, I will have a color palette ready for you. That way you don't have to buy a quart. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Love you guys. Uh, tons of pumpkins coming your way, so stay tuned.